Let the church say amen. amen. God bless you, and it's good to see all of you making your way out today for us again to come together and to share together in the Word of God. Um, it's our focus that we put an emphasis on rooted as pertains to us being ready, concern the Word, for us to be observant, being obedient, that brings forth transformation. And we want to make sure that all of us are mindful that when we come, it's not a matter of us becoming familiar with the Word, but all the Word of God is empowering and as well as a matter of us dedicating ourselves to it that we may have life. My words are life. And I thank you for your presence and I pray that you continue to share with others in your home that Bible study become a focal point. This month is back to church month. We're back to Sunday school, we're back to Bible class, we're back to church. And I encourage you on this Sunday as we acknowledge back to church that we're mindful that we're called to be disciples and it's our obligation for us to let our light shine and to share with others. Ye are the salt of the earth. So please, sir, please, ma'am, start at home first. Invite your loved ones, family, friends, co-workers to come with you, share and worship that you may be an influence in someone else's life. They may have a closer walk with Jesus. Amen. We want to ask for your prayers tonight. We have a prayer request for Deaconess Betty Cooper. She was here this morning in Bible class. And I understand now she's been hospitalized. And so let's be mindful to pray for Deacon Cooper as well, as I know he's there taking care of his wife. So many other names we know we can call, but uh, let's be specific tonight for requests of that family. Let's whisper a prayer. Father God, thank you again for this privilege. You have granted for us to come into this place again, to uh, come into the homes of others, be it by uh, tablets, computers, phones, wherever they may be, to share, to encourage, to enlighten to remind us, Lord God, of what your word says concerning your will for our life. I pray, Lord God, that we are receptive, that we hear your spirit, that we allow you to be the teacher ultimately, that we will hear your voice and move forward and grow thereby. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for the interest and the concern and love you have placed in the, in the hearts of your believers to come and to draw closer to you, that we can be more impactful, we can be more powerful, and allow our witness to be greater in this community and abroad. Just ask that you bless the time that we share in Jesus' humble name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're talking about um, discerning the voice of God, discerning the voice of God. And really, uh, that's been our goal really to introduce or to make us more acquainted with God, the Holy Spirit. Uh, but we know that um, it's not a cookie cutter experience. There are many ways in which we communicate with God. And um, ultimately, many of us have some questions at times of how to discern voices, voices. And I want to kind of pinpoint on that because it's God's voice, it's the devil, and you got a voice too. And oftentimes, our voice can be um, more uh, of our interest because it's for our better interest. So we make it, it is God that's speaking or this is what God wants for me. Uh, but if it's God's will over our will, we have to be clear in discerning his will because it's his will primarily that's going to work in the, in the end. Uh, man has his way, but God uh, way and plan will prevail. And so I want to make sure we spend some time because most people who come into the church struggle with how do I know what God wants me to do? How do I know that this is the Lord speaking to me um, when my mind changes, my vision changes, my perception changes? How do I know I can key in on this particular thing that I'm hearing or I want to do and know this is the will of God for me? And it's tricky. And I'm going to try to get to that a little later about just a matter of us growing and walking with God, why it's important to um, make some definite steps along the journey that you don't rush your prayer. You don't get ahead of God, and you trust the timing in the middle. All of us are developing. All of us are growing, and none of us are where we were on yesterday or last week or year because you can't turn back the hands of time. And so that means that it's a point of growth, and sometimes even in the dead spaces, God is still allowing us to develop to be prepared for what he has in our future. So I want to start tonight in the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew, and I want to pinpoint this um, clear distinction of voices. I want us to make a clear distinction on your voices. And while you're working on that, y'all going to see me wearing some colorful shirts I'm trying to get my Miami Vice on. I'm 
trying to get my, you know, my floor to fill, you know, I'm, you know, <laughs> you know, it's different when you're a kid growing up and you're watching the stuff on TV and then you actually live there. I understand now, you know, got to get something that you can breathe in. Amen. So don't be laughing at me at my colors. All right. I'm trying to get my Tommy Bahama on. Amen. <laughs> Matthew chapter 16. I want to, I want to, I got a reader. Amen. You a reader tonight? You going to read the word of God? Help me read the word of God. We're going to start at chapter 16 and verse 13 and following. I want you to watch how he has it. I, I want, to, want to show you how it transitioned and how voices are impactful in our decision making and our perceptions. All right. So in the 16th chapter of Matthew, this famous text, one of, my, one of my favorite church anniversary texts, and we get to verse 18, and we talk about, you know, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, right? We know that part, but let's make sure we watch what happens in this particular passage of this conversation with Jesus in his own, and within his own camp, I want you to see how quickly voices can allow us to get off path when we don't discern what the will of God is. Verse 13, if you don't mind reading, I'm going to do a little commentary in between, and then we'll move forward. Thank you. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. All right. So, so now let's rewind it back. Verse 13. Jesus has a personal conversation with who? The people who follow him. His, 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 his 12 and inner circle that has watched him feed the hungry, heal the sick, raise the dead, perform miracles. He gives a personal survey among them. I need for you to help me so I can have a better perception about ministry. And I'm asking you as members, you go out and ask folks, I want you to tell me how you see Piney Grove, right? He says, first question, I want you to tell me what the hood got to say. He starts in, you tell me what they saying in the streets about me. That's what verse 13 says. Whom do men say that I am? They report back and say, well, some people say they think you're John the Baptist. Some people say they believe that you, Elijah, come back from the dead. Some people believe that think that you are the old prophet Jeremiah. Oh, that's what they got to say? All right. Now he turns it in in a circle and say, now that's what they got to say about me. But who do you say, church, that I am? It's become a very personal question, and many of us in the room, if we pass the mic, Many of us will echo what we hear because many of us may not have the right answer. Because we ourselves, who have been here for the majority of our life, are not clear on who is Jesus Christ. Some are echoing testimonies and stories from our parents and grandparents and may not have had a personal relationship or, or an experience with God with a greater conviction that even if you can't articulate it, you deeply in your heart know and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So he asks, what do you got to say about me? Out of all 12, only one has something to say. And this will make it so special because I'm not sure if Peter knew unless Jesus clarified how he's able to say what he says. He says then, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus confirmed his answer by saying, Blessed art thou, 
signed by Jonah. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. Bible class didn't teach this to you. Your Sunday school teacher didn't teach this to you. This something you have by faith received and understood outside the source of what you know. My Father which is in heaven is the one who has given you this type of revelation. Now you know this truth. Now that you believe it, he affirms that God gave it. Y'all with me? Then he goes on to say, now let me tell you the assignment for your life because you have this revelation. And I say unto you, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon your faith, upon your confection, upon your truth of what you know about me, this is the same thing I'm going to use in other men's soul that I will build my church upon faith. And the gates of hell will not prevail against my will, my purpose, my assignment, the church. Then he goes further and say, listen, I'm not going to send you out here without, without power. I give to you, this is what we, we call theologically in any class, we call this the pastor keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And with these keys, whatever that thou bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose in the earth will be loosed in heaven. He gives these spiritual tools and keys of power through him to operate in ministry. Now he's clear. That what the street had to say. This what you had to say. For the rest of y'all, the 11 had nothing to say. Listen to Peter because he know what he's talking about. Then upon that, y'all other 11 got to find the same thing out. And have the same conviction and faith yourself if you're going to do ministry because you cannot win without faith. You cannot do this ministry without faith. You cannot go forward and do the things I've called for you to do if you don't know for yourself who I am. And upon this, you are operating gifts and talents and other things to be able to do ministry. Now, let's go a little further. He says, now, now listen, I want y'all to keep this to your chest. Don't tell nobody. That you know who I am. Then he shifts. And let's pick up verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elder and chief priests and scrap and be killed and be raised the third day. Now, now he clarifies, this is what you need to know concerning God's will of how this is to come. And this ain't no cookie cutter story of how you want to go. This is, in fact, what must be happening according to the gospel, according to the scriptures, according to the prophecies of the Messiah coming. It must happen this way. I must be taken. I must be tried. I must be uh, betrayed, I must be killed and raised the third day. And then what they say, verse 22. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far from it, you Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he, he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciple, if anyone desire to come after me, let him deny himself, take off his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses it, his life for my sake will find it. For what profit it is to a man if he gained the whole world. Whole world. And loses his own soul. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? All right, right there. Let's stop him. Let's, let's rewind back. So now Jesus tells him, don't tell no one that you know I am Jesus Christ. Then be clear of how I must be sacrificed for this to happen. Then he goes on. To a personal conversation because Peter can't take the truth. He's pulled him aside because of his own personal interests, his own personal desires that now is not reflective to the perfect will of God. 
And he tells Jesus, no, you can't do that. No, Jesus, we've been out here in these streets. We've been, we've been riding together, man. You know, I love you, man. I ain't let nobody do no harm to you. You can't what? You're going to die. They're going to kill you. Who's going to kill you? I'm ready. I'm packing. You know what I'm saying? P P Peter, Peter, the one you won't ride in with. Y'all, y'all playing. But, but, but you, you need somebody. They got your back. They ain't playing. You run up on me the wrong way. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. Y'all too quiet. You know what I'm saying? I, I said it last week. Try Jesus. Don't try me. He, Jesus, I got your back. He comes straight out with his personal desire, view, and perspective. And Jesus says to him, not Peter, but he speaks to the spirit in Peter. He says, Satan, get behind me. He says, you are an offense to me. Wait a minute, I love you, Jesus. What do you mean? This is the warning I'm trying to say to us about voices. Because many of us will always take our friends, loved ones, and family voice over their interest and concern for your embedderment versus the will of God for you. And we give them that space because they love me. They care for me. They want the best for me. And you will allow their voice to rise above, above the voice that God is actually saying to you because that's a comfortable voice, but it's a compromised voice. And the only thing that makes a difference in this text is Jesus calls out a name that's not seen in the room. He doesn't say to Peter, no, man, you know, you understand. No, no, no. He says, no, Satan. You, you cannot walk with me and you speak that language. You cannot be part of me and you diminish and you oppose God's perfect will when it's spoken. Immediately, this is your response. And this is what the text says, y'all. He pulled him away. This is personal. This, this, this is a different agenda. This, this, is, this is something solistic. He, he, he can't hear that part. He's not praying himself. Y'all ain't listening to me, church. Peter ain't start let me talking. Let me pray about it. Let me get a better understanding. He tell him, no, you can't do that. And Jesus says, Satan, get behind me. This is offense unto me. For you say of not the things of God, but those things of men, fleshly things. Now we gotta be truthful with ourselves. When it gets to God's will, when it gets to doing the work of God, how many of us are operating by what God has said or how we want to do it? Have I prayed? Have I fast? Have I, have I asked God for directions? Or have I went with my personal skill sets and started to put stuff together in the church of how I think it's supposed to work? Amen, church. Amen, somebody. I hear old the late uh, Michael Shakespeare say, hello, bulb light, light bulbs, hello. I get a witness from somebody here, Hel hello, lights. S -s Someone here has to be mindful of how our churches have gotten the condition we got in because we have not been listening to the word. No, we haven't listened to the word. We, we, we haven't been trying to figure or wrestle with it. We've been put things in our hands, we've taken and we run away with it and make it work the best way we can. And that's what we see Peter doing in this text. He heard something he don't like. He's been given assignment, given a charge, told the mission, and immediately he said, no, Jesus, you can't die. Well, how's it going to happen? If Jesus never go to the cross, there is no church. There is no sacrifice given for your sins. There is no mediation. There is, there is no mediator for us. If he doesn't go to the cross, there is no promise that what Jesus, what God says, I will send forth my son in due season. It will never happen. And when you hear the answer of how it happens concerning the perfect will, you say, no, sir. Can't be. And, and, and listen, church, this ain't the first time Peter had a, gotten his way of him not agreeing with the will of God. That's what happened in the garden when he cuts a man's ear off. He can't accept what God has been telling him the whole time. Let's go a little further. Now, now, what I'm trying to get at is that, of course, we're aware that um, there's God's will. Satan has a will. But how do we discern in our mind the difference between the two? Because now Jesus says this is Satan who has now pushed his will 
mixed in with your personal emotions. And so afterwards, as we continue to read the text, Jesus goes on to say in verse 24, if any man will come after me, no matter who you are, let them, listen church, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. The deny me in this text means you must, first of all, be aware of your ego. You have to empty yourself of your ego. Now, some of you sitting up here with your, you know, head looking at me like, you don't understand what I'm saying, but you, you know your ego. You know if you can't never be humbled, admit you wrong, say you sorry. Hello, church. You, you know, you know that when you get in some, some kind of mood, you don't want to be bothered and you just don't say nothing to me. You just sit in your mess anyway and you know you're wrong, but I just want to be mad. Come on, church. Come on. Come on. He says, if, you, if anyone wants to follow him, you say you save, you say you're a Christian, you have to govern your own capacity by what is going on inside of you, not what's going on outside of you. You must deny yourself, which also means you must empty yourself. Growing up at the house, my mama at home probably watching, and, uh, and I used to crack jokes all the time about um, me thinking she was talking to me. But I found out when I was growing up, I'm an 80s baby, we had to wash dishes. We didn't have dishwashers. Nobody in my hood had dishwashers, right? Even right now, our, our dishwasher had broken. I told Sister Till, I said, I'm not fixing because these kids is lazy. They got to learn how to wash dishes, dry them, and put them up, right? So, so we, we have the privilege that we could take our dishes and dump it off. But growing up, mama washed the dishes at the sink. And I would hear her talk, and I will go out, Mom, you called me? No, I ain't called you. Mom, you called me? No, I ain't called you. And I figured out that Mama was praying out loud. Now, now many of us, we, we may pray, Our Father, which art in heaven. Many of us may pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And some of us just talk to him. I got a few witnesses in here. And we, and, and we talk to him like we need him. So I keep walking around, I realize, I said, that's what it is. Mama was talking to the Lord. And I figured this out. Some of us need to learn how to talk to ourselves. Because if we would talk to ourselves more, you will stop putting yourself in positions when you compromise your witness. If you're going to deny yourself, you're going to govern who you are, how you behave, how you present yourself. Some of us got to get back to say, no, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to let it go. You know what? I'm, I want to make this phone call, but I ain't going to make it. You know, I, now I see this text message, and I, I'm about to tell them how I really feel, but no, I ain't going to say it. I saw the post. You put my name, you tagged me in it. You're calling me out. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. Y'all too quiet. But I'm going to tell myself, I'm, 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 trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to deny myself because my ego say, you ain't going to talk to me any kind of way. In these social media streets, I'm coming for you. You didn't call me out. Right? But, but I'm, I'm denying myself. I'm wrestling innerly with my ego because as a Christian, it's the first thing Jesus says you have to do. Which says to me that he was addressing what was going on inside of Peter because Peter ego was saying, no, you can't die. But it's not your will, Peter. Peter. It's God's will. And God's way says anyone who's after me first must deny your ego. Now, how are you going to deny the ego is that you have to be aware of your ego. So I've learned over the years, Dean Covington, that there's some phone calls I don't need to respond back to until I get my spirit right. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. I'm trying to talk to you. I'm in the text, but you ain't helping me. You want to figure out how God's going to speak to you. First of all, stop long enough to get your spirit right because if you off, you can't hear him. And if you're not settled, when you know God telling you, you still won't say it right because your spirit ain't settled yet. So you'll still say the right thing the wrong way. I'm just trying to yell at you. I want to get your attention tonight. I don't want nobody to go to sleep on me. 
He says, first of all, you, Jesus says, you must deny yourself, which means self-denial and self-emptying. Now, now, I want to say this part because I got my brother uh, Massey here and, and you work out. And you know, discipline doesn't start when you get to the gym. It's a whole prep process. I've been trying, Deacon, Deacon, I've been trying, man, for about five years now to get to the gym. I didn't waste a, I didn't waste a whole lot of money, Doc, a whole lot of money. I've been drinking water, but I ain't made it there yet. I got up to a gallon a day, but I ain't made it yet. I moved on over and got me what kind of water I started getting. No, 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 no I ain't that one. No, 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 ain't the name. It's the kind of water it is. What? Alkaline. Alkaline water. <laughs> Trying to get my system together. You know, stop building. I start working. Then I said, no, I got the water going. Now I'm going to start working on these salads. Because at night, I got the wrong trace. Them Tillman's get big. I'm in them 40s, and I got to watch myself. So I'm trying not to do the snack and the ice cream at night. The last three nights, I've been tearing up this blue bell because I ain't used to being around it. I'm trying to tell The Lord know I ain't lying. That blue bell been calling me. That, that, that homemade vanilla and, and, that, what the, and that butter pecan. God to mighty. Woo! The Lord know I'm trying. I'm, try, I'm denying myself. So I'm drinking my water. I'm eating my salads. But I ain't doing no walking. I ain't made around the block. They got a whole workout system across the street for one dollar. I done lost hundreds of dollars not going to the gym. It's one dollar go across the street. But I'm working on the denial, y'all. And it's starting to mind. It's starting to mind. I'm denying myself. I'm trying to get my mind right. I'm trying to get in the right space. I'm trying to get the motivation. I'm trying to get there. But listen, I can't do it if I'm telling myself, no, I'm all right. Just a few pounds here. And, no, no, come on. Come on. Let's, let's keep it real. I can't get there. I'm saying, no, you know, well, I went to the doctor. My physical was straight. I'll never get there because I keep giving myself a pass on how I'm governing myself and I'm out of order. So still, I said, I want you to go with me. I got to get me some, some Florida clothes. I said, I moved all these clothes down here, all these cotton shirts. It's hot. Got me sweat every time I walk outside. I got to go. Help me find some clothes. We going out there, and her, her and uh, my oldest son, Trey, they walking around trying, Daddy, you like this? You like that? I said, what size? I said, 2X. He said, you ain't no 2X. I said, no. I said, no, I'm telling you. I'm 2X. <laughs> go, go try it on. No, go on, bring me that 3. But in my mind, I'm telling myself I'm 2X. Y'all ain't hearing me tonight. How can you deny yourself if you're not truthful about your condition? If you're not aware of what your personal problems is, your immaturity, your lack of spirituality, your discipline. How can you be truthful to follow Christ and you're not truthful about your own ego? Let's go here quickly. Um, uh, Philippians chapter 2, very familiar passage. This is the perfect example. We always want to look to Jesus. If you ever want to look at what your measuring stick is, let's look at the life of Jesus Christ. The second chapter, the book of Philippians. And I'm going to try to come back to this Matthew 18, but I want to make sure I get this in here. <laughs> Oh, thank you, sister. I appreciate that. I was in 18, right? That's what was. Are y'all there? Yes. All right, so second book, verse 7 and 8. But made himself of no reputation, he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, what this means is that Jesus thought it not robbery. That's verse, that's verse 6. Know that I'm equal to God, that I'm going to lessen my deity. I'm going to come down to earth and not make it about me. 
I'm going to go in disguised. I'm going to be born in human flesh. I'm not going to allow my godliness to interfere with my human experience. And you know, some of us can't do that because we go anywhere. We got to let folks know, you know, I got so-and-so certification. Y'all ain't talking to me. I got so-and-so years on the job. I got, y'all ain't talking to me. You're going to tell, you're going you're gonna to qualify yourself first. With no reputation, he comes in earth and he fasts himself as what he has created as a man. And the Bible says he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. What was the ultimate cause and purpose of his mission and the death of the cross? Dying on a tree, according to the Bible, was a death of a curse. Curse is the man who hangs on a tree. So he came not only as man of which he formed, he operated in the capacity of a servant who was lower in society. And he took on the embarrassment of dying as a cursed man for our sins because he himself was God. Now, God can do all of that. What does that say about our ego? When you say what you ain't going to take, what you ain't going to do, where you, where you going to go? But how are you going to be a Christian without a reflection of your ego blocking God's will? So I know some of us are quiet tonight because you're wrestling with it. And that's why I don't mind in Bible class reading the Bible so you can wrestle with what the text says. He says, first, you must deny yourself. Then he says, pick up your cross. Yeah. Now, the cross in the text, brothers and sisters, is... It's a matter of us understanding all of us has an assigned discomfort and challenge in your life. Yes. I don't know what your cross is. You don't know what my cross is. But Jesus' cross was Calvary. He says, now, as you see me in this position, in many ways seemingly be compromised, you have one as well. But many of us want the Jesus and we want the blessings, but we don't want to deal with our behavior, our mindset, our true character, and the burden you bear in reflection of who he is. That's tough. Because if you cannot understand your assignment to love and to forgive, how can you be a reflection of Jesus? I'm saved. I know I'm saved. But you mean. I mean, you're real mean. You, you, you semi, you're wicked. Because <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say. Lady called my phone the other day, and um, I picked the phone up. Hello. I said, hello. I said, yeah, hello. Can I help you? I said, so who it is? Who you think it is? <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> who you? I'm gonna, wait a minute now. I don't play these games. Now, wait a minute. I don't, know, I don't know what home record this is, but listen, I don't know. I don't know who you is. <laughs> I said, I said, this, this, this is Ezra. Oh, 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 my bad. But you know some folk, you know that. You pick that phone up, you don't know who you're going to get. Right. Amen. Thank you for a few amens. And some church folk, you got to be careful. The wrong time of day, you might hear the wrong thing in the background. Y'all too quiet. Y'all too quiet tonight. You got to pick up your cross. And then follow me. Three components. Deny, pick up, bear, and follow me. He says to us very clearly that if we're going to empty ourselves of our ego, we have to be aware of what's going inside our life. And in many cases, this cross-bearing, listen, church, it is your weakness. It's your weakness. This is where I think many of us in our church have done a poor job of how we try to give the picture of Christianity because we reflect on people as the way they should be and not the process of getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Can, 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 we, can we talk tonight about discerning God's voice? <laughs> because this is stuff we wrestle with in our life on a personal level because we don't walk around every day on Sunday morning high. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Because God, I keep learning in these Florida streets, one person cut, cut you off, you better get the wrong spirit. <laughs> and you be on the news tomorrow night, it was a shootout. 
Something didn't happen, right? We, we got to be aware in this process of how things happen in time. And when people aren't there, they get confused sometimes. And that could be your weakness. You're in the process of becoming. Your cross bearing is that I'm short-tempered. Your weakness is you like to cuss. You like it. I got a few amens in the back. That's, that's why I'm trying to talk to you tonight. I'm trying, you love the Lord, but you like to cuss. You love the Lord, but you like trap music. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk to me tonight, see? And, and, and I love Jesus. He loves me. But I like what I like. And sometimes we disqualify people's relationship because we know their sin. Am I making sense? He says, you got it. that's the cross you got to bear, then wear it. He don't say that, that's your, your end result. He says, keep on walking with me. You like cigarettes, you've been smoking how many years? You smoking, you're down to how many packs? Okay, come on, keep on walking with me. Right, right? And once around, got blood pressure, got you right there. You, can, you drinking one bottle of wine, you're down to half a bottle. Keep on walking with me. Y'all yeah. yeah. ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. But see, we come to church and we want to put all of this cross-bearing aside as if in our real reality and we having a shouting experience on Sunday morning, but then Sunday evening. Amen. amen. I got a strong amen here tonight. Thank you. I want to make sure the folks at home I think I'm going to talk to myself. Amen. <laughs> I got some amen folk that say, yeah, pastor, I've been bearing this cross so mighty wild now. <laughs> but let, let's think about it. But I'm not what I used to be. Amen. I could come, give God a praise for it. You testify, listen, I know where I was at. I ain't all the way there yet, but you, you glad I ain't where I used to be. Bear this cross and follow me, which means now after I'm aware I have to empty myself of my fleshliness, right? My carnality, my personal desires. I have to also bear what I don't want to bear and continue to walk and be in intimate relationship with him. Because the following is the pursuit and me drawing closer to Christ. He says you have to deny, bear, and follow. And because we won't be real about our are denying and we refuse to be truthful about our cross bearing it's a struggle when we hear the following you think pastor is getting in your business you think he asking too much I'm telling you just read the Bible if you start denying more accepting your cross more you're leaning more on the following him because you already testified I'm not what I used to be. So if God has been faithful in his part, he's still requiring for me, where am I being faithful in mine? Now, now I got to deny myself. I have to bear this cross. I have to follow him, which speaks now to why maturity for Christians is important. You being here tonight, you're setting yourself apart, not to be better than anyone, but taking your faith more seriously for you to discern God's voice because the next text we're going to get to is clear that God is always talking to you. Always talking to you. But are you hearing him determine upon where you at in your life? Because I'm speaking, but you have so much stuff occupied, you can't receive it. You got so much stuff you don't want to deal with, you can't accept it. But if you would with, if you would, if you would uh, unload yourself, empty yourself, be sincere, see God for real. If you would take on your assignment, take on your burden, take on your test, and continue to be more intimate with me, you will get a different result yeah. than what you're getting. Let's go to John chapter 10 and verse 27. It's the next place where Jesus is clear of him identifying that I talk to my sheep all the time. They ain't got no problem hearing my voice. Amen. And they ain't got no problem doing what I tell them to do. Because when I speak, they know it's me talking. John, Gospel John. 
chapter 10, and verse 27. Now listen, I'm Baptist, so I'm always going to use the King James Version until I get better. But I was just raised that way. Amen. That we was raised that way. Now I use other translations, but just know, if yours read different, it's all right. But I'm reading from the King James Version. Y'all ready? In John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Now, now for me, I think this is one of the, the greater desires for me to always be truthful with God, because... I know he hears me, and I know when I hear him, and in spite of my condition, habits, history, problems, complexes, or whatever you have that always want to disqualify you, he already know you. He knew all of that before he said anything to you. That's Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before you was formed in your mother's belly, I knew you. I already ordained you a prophet to the nation. I already assigned your life. Before, your, before you even, your mom even had a name for you, I already had. I, I know who you are. But here's the piece again. The end result is his children, they follow. They're obedient. They execute. They move according to his voice. Immature Christians struggle in this space. Because we're not used to following. It's one of the most fearful things I have concerning our race that's been raised fatherless. Who have an issue with authoritative voices. Because you're not used to hearing or being chastised or being held accountable. You buck against it. Even to the point of death. Because you have never had any governance. You will die for nothing because you can't submit to authority. It's a, it's a racial problem. Across the board, we have generations of people who are lawless because they cannot respond to authority. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. I know them all by name. I know who they are. And when I speak to them, Ain't no problem. Ain't nobody up here begging your Sunday morning. Y'all, love one another. Just love one another. Just stop doing it. Stop acting that way. And I ain't got to do all that. I ain't got to put no show on. The word says, how can you love God who you have not seen and not love your brother who you see? Today? That's what the Bible says. Why I got to beg you to be what you say you're supposed to be and you're reading the same book? You either is or you ain't. He gets to the core of that sheep respond to the voice. That's one of the issues about this whole point of maturity. And I want to make sure you get this because if you're not listening and you cannot hear God's voice, you can't discern the direction he's pointing you in. And this is the struggle. In this journey, church, if it's really spirit-led, and that's what we truly desire, that God leads us and guides us, you have to be able to hear his voice because you make pivots in life that don't make sense. And you can't always find a biblical reference that's going to tell you, well, this we did with David, so this we're going to do for me. No, some things God is saying to you because that's your journey. And that's him leading you through the process. That's why you have to walk by faith and not by sight. You cannot continue to mirror a walking experience or relationship that you don't have. Because God speaks to us, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So now it gets to how truthful are you concerning where you are in your walk? Because he requires for your discipline about your ego, you addressing and wrestling and walking with your cross-bearing weakness and staying faithful in the journey that you don't succumb to your weakness or your problems, or your challenges, but you continue to walk with me. 
Are y'all listening to me? So the first thing I'm going to say is I hurry and get out the way because we want to make sure we keep our time. Is that we have to be consistent with the word. If we're going to identify, if we're going to discern God's voice, you always have to be clear about the consistency of God's word. His word will never compromise his character. God ain't going to tell you to lie on your taxes. That ain't his voice. That's you because you need a couple more thousand and you want to you you, you put somebody else on there to get your numbers up. Come on and talk to me tonight. The Lord ain't told you that. Well, Lord, you know, I got to pay these bills off like this. So if my, if my, if my, my, my sister let me put my niece on. Y'all, y'all ain't talking to me tonight. You know what I'm saying? I pay that off. You know what I'm saying? Get my license back. Y'all ain't talking to me here tonight. You know what I'm saying? Then I pay her back. When I get my income, I get my state taxes back. And all that, you know, outline the whole scandal in Jesus' name. You, he, it has to be consistent with his word. His word is consistent with his character. Y'all know us. Y'all know us. And we're going to make it sound so, so good. Amen. See, I asked y'all last week if y'all hadn't y'all kept up with your homework, if we found someone that we're going to allow the authority to hold us accountable for stuff just like that. Yeah, I understand what your situation is. However, ain't, that's not God's will for your life. <laughs> now, if that's what you want to do, don't put the Lord in that, Sister Johnson. The Lord ain't in that. And if you got to pay that money back, you know why. I rest behind you. Y'all quiet in here. Yeah, I'm allowing on y'all taxes. You know, amen. Amen. Rent them to Caesars with Caesars. Rent them to God was God. Y'all know what the Bible say. Don't be quiet up here like that. Don't be quiet like that. It has to be consistent with the word of God. God's voice never will allow us to engage in activity or relationships that's not consistent with the word of God. You can't fix it, switch it, Make excuses for it, and this is the problem. That's how Satan tricked us in the first place. In the garden, what the serpent did was deceive Eve. He deceived her, which means he misconstrued truth. And to the form that it became a desire for the ego. Because then he says that God knows if you eat of the fruit, you will be like him. Y'all ain't going to talk to me tonight. You won't surely die. You know, you know what it is? When you start talking to that good ear, come on now. Right, right. Right, you know you're wrong. Right. Yeah, if I eat, yeah, I, then I know. Yeah, 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 right, right. And you always got someone boosting you on the ignorance. I'm trying to tell you, you need someone to keep you solid. You always got someone boosting. They'll never tell you the truth. They're going to go with the mess with you. Then you get out there. Yeah, I, I was going to tell you, you shouldn't have did that. No, I told you the whole time. You kept boosting me. That's what happened with the first sin, the fall of man. It was deception by God's truth being twisted. And she was deceived. This is the word I was saying earlier, Brother Mac didn't like it. But men, here we go again. The Bible says that she was deceived. First Timothy 2. He wasn't deceived. He was weak. He didn't take his position. He didn't, he didn't take the fight he should have took. You allow your wife to be exposed because you was out of place. <laughs> God, somebody. Deke, I need your amen because they, they quiet over here. They quiet now. I got an amen over here now. He was weak. And so as we, 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 we deal with our personal lives, we ourselves have to be aware of how we've been deceived by what people say, people's interpretation, 
people's commentary, and we ourselves don't know what did the word of God say to me. What is my conviction concerning the word of God for my life? This is the wrestle because innerly that's the point. Am I hearing God's voice? Or is that my secret agenda? It's, 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 it's itching at this, this, this inner wrestle we have with our true character. That's why none of us should celebrate your highs. Because you always have humanistic moments to remind you that you know better than nobody else. And it ain't easy to slip or fall. Don't laugh at nobody when we talk about nobody. Because it's dinner, it can be you tomorrow. Those are our spiritual. You're supposed to be trying to cover the ones a week. Like God covered you. Church got quiet. He says, be careful. Now, the whole point now is you have to be clear about the word of God. You cannot neglect the word of God. Neither can you build your life and not aware of how Satan is deceptive in the things that we're familiar with what we don't know. You have to be in the word of God. I want to read this in your hearing real quick because I want you to see it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 real quick. (laughs) Genesis chapter 3. The fall of man, how sin entered the world, how it separate us from the perfect will of God as pertains to the assignment for a man. Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field which the Lord thy God made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, ye shall not eat of any fruit of the garden. This, this subtle talks about how Satan is, in his voice, he's a tempter. How he's, he's crafty and sharp. And how he's wise and how he deals and conning and how he communicates. And how he uses his talents against us to get us off the will of God. And in this case, Eve was left subject because there was someone present that knew better that didn't play that part. For all of us in the room, we may not have people present to cover us, but we have the word. The word don't change. I don't know what translation you're using like that. The point is to get the clarity of thought, but it doesn't change the truth and the message of what it's saying. What it's requiring of you is for you to know he's requiring for you to have godly guidance. And that's why the book has to be essential to our walk. If you hear the word of God, God expects for you, for you to respond to what you hear. Not think it over. Not pray about it. Because it's a faith issue. You believe it or you don't. The voice of God would never exclude the facts of the principles of God's word. Here's the endangerment. We don't know what the book says. So when you don't know the word of God says about your finances, you're not frugal or you're not disciplined in how you handle your finance. But pertain to finance and pertain to men, pertain to fathers. He says, if you don't leave your children an inheritance, you're worse than an infidel. You're worse than a sinner. You're worse than someone who doesn't even know God. Now, wait a minute. Lord, I'm trying, Lord, I'm trying to pay my bills. You tell me a man don't work, don't eat. I'm trying to keep my head above water. You talking about I got to be looking down the road another generation? Y'all not hearing me. But along with your responsibility and your headship as leader of your family also includes you looking at legacy. So while you good time Charlie on Saturday, you got to be thinking about grandkids ain't got here yet. I ain't got no amens. But when we don't know what the word of God says about family, then we're not fighting trying to keep it. You ain't hearing me. I ain't talking about throwing blows. 
The curse of this chapter, when you get the end of it, I'm finna hurt and got your way. Everybody lead us out. And God, we brought up in class, they talking about, my wife don't listen to nothing I say. I said, well, that's your problem. <laughs> that's, that's sure enough your problem. <laughs> but that's a fight you got you to gotta take or a fight you haven't been fighting. So instead of you fighting and make sure you keep your, your house balanced, you've compromised. And now you want to make her do something that she ain't did the last 30 years. You lost that fight. That's right. <laughs> Because it's your job for you to give headship to your family. God didn't say for her to do that. He said for you to do that. I can't say it enough. Let's get back to the text. So Jesus leaves off in the 16th chapter, 18th chapter of uh, Matthew. Verse 24. Oh, 16, 16, 16 chapter of Matthew. Verse 24. If any man come after me, he must deny himself. He must take up his cross, must follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So if you're continuing to refuse to deny, you're going to lose. This is the same text. He goes from a revelation from heaven, from God himself, to the personal Directions from Jesus as the assignment of their lives for them to go forward and to establish the church, to them understand the call and the power given them as keys to the kingdom, to him now rebuking Jesus concerning the will for his life, to now him saying, listen, you cannot operate in the manner of talking like Satan. You have to get that out of you. You got to take up your cross you got to follow me, and if you don't, verse 25, whoever try to save his life, you're going to lose it. And whoever loses his life, for my sake, shall find it. I don't know what God wants me to do. What you holding on to then? God has a assignment for all our life. God has a purpose for all our life. God has a plan for all our life. God has a, has a work for all our life. So what you have made your life that you're trying to hold on to that you can't find your life in God? I've been coming to church all my life. I just don't know what God wants me to do. What you doing? You tr- what you trying to say that you can't find? He said right here. What's your problem of emptying yourself so you can clearly hear what God is saying to me? That's my little message tonight. Discerning God's voice, he immediately turns to you and your own self-governing of how do you deal with your personal ego that's blocking. Whosoever must deny, pick up your cross, and follow me. 1027. And my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And again, they follow me. While we're trying to galvanize our church and we're trying to put the piece together and we're trying to give new description and give um, clear um, directives and calls to how to move the church forward, it has to come back to do I hear God's voice? What disclaimers I'm making about what I can't do and why I'm not available? Am I picking up my weakness, picking up my cross and moving forward? What am I holding on to? I'm confused about if I should get involved or not, or I should commit myself or not. What is my own personal struggle? He says it's you. It's not him. All I'm saying to church is that now is all the time we have. And while we're trying to figure it out, we dying. Ain't nobody getting younger in this room. Nobody. You're getting older. You're getting close to your expiring date. And the call in your life is for you to hear spiritually. What am I holding on to that I'm not willing to let it go so I can totally commit my life to God who paid everything for me? Let us pray. Afterwards, we're going to encourage those at home, prepare your gifts, and be mindful as we come together to support this ministry. We ask that you will put it on the screen for those who may be where they are and they may know how they can support giving to the Lord's church. We want to again remind the church family to pray for Deaconess Betty Cooper. 
We also had a few names called this morning that I want to, to share. Uh, I think it was a sister, uh, Matthias, Jenny Matthias, who um, is, has a sister suffering with cancer, praying for Deacon Tyrone Abram and the loss of his sister-in-law, praying for Sister Betty Milton, um, and we're also praying for Sister Mary um, Morrison, who is getting ready to start her treatment with cancer and ask for the prayers for her church family to pray for her. And she also declared that she knows she's going to be all right. And so we want to touch and agree with our sister who's going through her challenge, but believe in God before it starts that he will get the glory. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you tonight for this privilege and honor you, Lord, for us to come to share your word as we walk through these scriptures and these scenarios, Lord God, of how we discern your voice in our personal journey. I pray, Lord God, tonight that you allow us to be receptive and reflective to the word of God tonight as we hear the words of Jesus as he spoke to his personal 12 and inner circle of their obedience and their sacrifice that was necessary for them to grow and to expand in faith. And to accomplish all the great things we read about in the Bible as being disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh God, as well as the Piney Grove Church, we take on the same mentality, the same obedience, the same humility. To take on the form of a servant. That we ourselves, Lord God, don't think more highly of ourselves than we ought. To present ourselves as a vessel. A vessel who understands we have weaknesses, we have shortcomings, we have issues. We wake up happy, we go to bed mad. Whatever our tempers may be, Lord God, we're aware we're, we're aware we're not what we should be, but we're not what we used to be. But we're still in your hand. And you promise us, Lord God, that you will continue to conform us into your image. So I pray, Lord God, as we present ourselves, that you continue to perfect your will in our life and the life of our church. We pray for all the names that have been called out tonight that has requested for the saints to pray. You told us in your word, Lord God, that if we call for the elders to get the oil, Lord God, to pray, and that you will hear our prayers, you will forgive us of our sins, and you will heal. So we pray, Lord God, now that you will touch, that you will give care and give comfort to the hearts of the bereaved. We pray, Lord God, now for Sister Betty Cooper, she's hospitalized, touch her, as only you know how, the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, any sick room of any name that's been called that we don't know of, that you will meet them as well. For, Lord God, we know there's no bearers or bounds, Lord God, where you cannot go. So I pray, Lord God, you will meet them just where they are, encourage their hearts and spirits to trust and lean and depend on you. Thank you tonight for your faithfulness. Thank you for bringing us out. Pray, Lord God, something has been said as we leave this place, it will germinate and it will continue to grow and stretch and expand us, that our hunger and thirst for you will become greater and more passionate. Bless us now as we leave this place, but not from our presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask it all. In all hearts to believe, said amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you. We ask for the deacons to come at this time. We want to say to those who are watching, continue to encourage one another and to share with us. We'll be back next week as we continue our series on discerning the voice of God. God bless you. Have a good night.